So, um, I just learned, so we are very proud to have here Kai Kai Ki, you know, who um, was a student, was a student of Yuri Shingen. He just told me that he finished his PhD in May and that he's coming here to Miami to interest a postdoc. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, he will deliver a lecture uh, of half an hour. Um, Yuri Shingen told me the lightning talk. <coughs> yeah. Whatever that means. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, the talk uh, today is a uh, equivalent rational geometry of linear actions. And this is a group work with the Professor Richinko and uh, Zhuja Zhang. Okay, uh, this is the uh, outline of today's talk. So, we have uh, roughly six seconds. So first of all, I want to uh, make some uh, basic definitions, and I know this definition is a little bit controversial. Some of them, some of you don't agree with this uh, definition, but uh, we have to say, okay, we define a linear or projectively linear action of uh, finite groups G arise by projectivization of an n plus one dimensional representation of G or a central extension of G. And they are called uh, interestive if the representation is reducible, or they are called uh, trusted but intermittent if the action is not interested, but there is a non trivial normal subgroup of G acting interestively, or we'll call them uh, primitive if neither of the both. So, here uh, we're going to introduce a little bit about this uh, first half formalism. So, first, uh, there are three groups here. The first one is the uh, B and G. So this was, uh, uh, so in 2019, Konsevich, Pastor, and Chinko defined new invariants of the action of finite abelian groups G on function fields of algebraic variety. And they take up values in this abelian group, which records uh, captures of the G action in tangent space to G fixed points. Uh, and later in 2020, uh, Krish and Chinko introduced a new group, equivalent Burside groups, Bur, uh, Bur and G. This is a billion group receiving variants of the actions of arbitrary finite groups G, generalizing the NG. And this group records uh, geometric information about sub varieties with non trivial stabilizers and also the characters of the action of the stabilizers. And later, one year later, uh, Krish and Chinko introduced a combinatorial Burside group, uh, B, C, and G, uh, which by forgetting the uh, geometry of strata with non trivial stabilizers. So here are three groups. And then we're going to go through a little bit more detail of these uh, three groups. The first one is B and G. Here we have to emphasize here G is only a billion. So for a billion group, B and G is generated by symbols of uh, less n. Where, where H, every bi is a capture of uh, G, such that uh, this sequence of this less n sequence of characters generates the uh, character group of G, and subject to two relations, O and B, uh, audit, uh, reordering and the block relations. Okay, there's a more general one that uh, you compare the first group. Here, uh, G is general. You can take uh, non-abelian uh, non groups. And this group is generated by infinitely many the most of this form, where H is an abelian group. Y is a subgroup of a centralizer of H in G, quotient of H. And K is a finite generated extension of K of transcendence degree D with faithful action by Y. Uh, here is actually the uh, function field of the uh, invariant strata fixed by H. And beta is a sequence of non trivial characters generated H bar, H star. So here, when D equals to zero, we call this symbol a point symbol. And when this symbol has a co dimension one with uh, dimension D equal to N minus one, we call it a divisorial symbol. And uh, this group subject to four relations. The first three are OCV. So similar things is a reordering relation. This is a conjugation relation and the vanishing relations. And the most important relation is the blow up relation. So here, uh, yeah, sure. 
That's a short question. So what is, what what is geometric meaning of v? Why why this implies zero? Oh, v? Yeah, O, C, R, clear V is kind of also will be clear, but what will V? Uh, I think V is uh, because I think it just generates from the. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, you, actually, this thing from, generates from the block prediction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, later. Okay. So I think you see this relation in yesterday's talk that uh, the set of two terms appear here that uh, it tells about, uh, and the professor tells about uh, the Y bar action on K star, that how to construct H bar, a uh, Y bar. And uh, there's also a recipe to produce Y bar action on K star, extending the given action of Y. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, and later, we have the combinatorial Versailles uh, group with G general. So here, uh, compare the difference. Like here, we have uh, every symbol is of form H, Y, and beta. And previously, here is a H, Y, K, and beta. So we forget about the capital K. We forget about function field and means we drop the geometric strata there. Okay, and the point is uh, this group is generated by finite many symbols, which means uh, this is actually computable because previously the equivalent versa group is generated by infinite many symbols and subject to some compli uh, complicated relations, which is uh, kind of hard to compute. And here the basic settings are similar to the previous one and subject to relations, the same relations actually. So, uh, now we have three groups, the B and C, uh, B and G, uh, the equivalent Versa group and the combinatorial Versa group. So first of all, we have, uh, I want to introduce uh, the composition, uh, decomposition theorem for the combinatorial Versa group. So in, in order to prove that uh, the composition theorem, first we'll have to introduce another group that is uh, B, C, and prime G, where at N, uh, where here, Prime here means uh, nothing, this is quite distinguished with uh, DC and G. Okay, so the basic uh, relations are the same, OCV relations are the same, but we just need to modify the block relation there. So here means we basically drop the theta two terms in the block relation. We only keep the theta one term in the block relation. And uh, so we modify the log relations from B to B prime. And uh, since we drop off the there are two terms, so we notice that uh, the defining relations of B C prime affect the G conflict classes of this pair H and Y. So, well, there's a, so this one, this step, this decomposition into uh, B and H and Y, this is easy. And where the B and H and Y is defined like this, where H prime and Y prime are in the same decomposed classes of a pair H and Y. So this step is true. There's nothing to say here. Okay, and there's a short lemma that tells try to relate this new group uh, B N H and Y to the another group B N G. So here uh, H is the villain, so B N H. And they are dif they differ by some uh, uh, they differ to by uh, they differ by some conjugation relations here, and where the conjugation relation is defined as uh, this one. So in particular, when G is a billion, then we have uh, and H is a subgroup of G, so H is a billion as well. So we have this thing; they're actually the same thing. And uh, to prove this theorem, actually, we use the uh, Mobius function on the sub uh, subgroup lattice of a billion groups of G, and we construct an explicit isomorphism between BC and the BC prime. So, so here uh, we have a, B, a BC and G that is isomorphic to uh, BC prime and G, and uh, from this you know, this step. So we have the decomposition here. And in particular, uh, when G is a billion, 
we can write it in a nice form and write it as a double sum of this thing. So that kind of relates the uh, two groups within those three groups, right? The combinatorial Versa group to the PC of uh, H. That's the relations, uh, kind of uh, relations of two groups. And uh, here's uh, some computation example. So like uh, we compute BC2 and the BC3 here. And uh, in particular, I have to notice that uh, for BC3, uh, for D5, A5, and A5, <laughs> uh, they're all zero. They're all zero. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about this later. So we try to understand, we have some understanding of the combinatorial bursa group and the PN. Now we try to investigate some of the equivalent uh, bursa group for NG. So in, in particular, like uh, we try to understand, in, in principle, we have, may have some different, some symbols and we'll tell okay, which symbol is zero, which symbol is not zero, because after a quotient. Or maybe we can simplify some of the symbol you know, that's it. So here, the first thing is that we can reduce some of the symbol to the point classes. So uh, by using the block relations B here. So in particular, symbol of this form where H is, uh, so H is H here. Uh, and with, with uh, this Y have a trivial actions on X. And in particular, every symbol of this form where you have a true uh, where the y action action on KD where with y true action and D is some uh, you know projective space. This can be reduced to some point symbol there. And another one is a vanishing lemma that uh, if you observe that uh, the sum of a subsequence of beta is uh, zero, then this symbol is zero. It vanishes. Actually, it's derived from the uh, v relation, the vanishing relation. And also there's another very important uh, concept that is called incompressible symbols, which means this symbol cannot arise from uh, the theta two term in the block relation. And uh, also notice that this is a divisorial symbol. If you want to talk about uh, incompressible symbol, which means the invariant strata D has that has co-dimension. So we have this uh, kind of a decomposition here, just like uh, Professor Yuri mentioned above, there are several decompositions. You have MRC decomposition. This is the incompressible decomposition here. So we try to study these incompressible symbols and we're gonna use this later. So in dimension two, the incompressible symbols is uh, uh, falls into two classes. The first one is uh, the versorial symbol with non-cyclic actions on P1. Well, just like, uh, because when you try to blow up from a point, what you're gonna have the action on this P1 can only be cyclic. If you have non-cyclic one, then it's not, uh, uh, comp uh, this, uh, not uh, uh, this is not compressible. And another one is, uh, you have an action on KC where C it has genus greater or equal to one, which means uh, it's not one. Okay. But in dimension three, uh, the situation is more complicated. For example, we only list some of them. Say if D is not union rule, okay, and if D is G solid, not G equivalent, uh, G equivalent uh, to G equivalent uh, more fiber space over some positive uh, dimensional base. And in particular, and what n equals to three, this is a rational surface, which is not y equivalently rational to a Hertzberg surface. So those things are, give you some incompressible symbols. So here, uh, we also have some uh, here, then later we go to give you some uh, equivalent rational invariants, for example, the invariant locus is a uh, G covariant rational map, uh, G covariant, uh, a G variant. And also we have this uh, Rochester using variants. And we're gonna give uh, a new example that is uh, not distinguished by 
Rochester using invariants, but uh, could be distinguished by the birth site invariants. And uh, another one, famous lemma, the no lemma, that tells you, okay, if I have a action, if a GX generically free on X, and uh, E is a G vector bundle of rank N, then uh, if then uh, the vector bundle is g rational to some x times dn with trivial actions on pn. So in order to compute uh, the class x, uh, gx on x, we need to put the, the model x in the standard form. So I think uh, also Professor Yuri mentioned yesterday that uh, you require, uh, there's an open subset u, in X where G action is free. And the complement is a normal crossing divisor such that uh, they have a several component D and the G action on D is either D itself or they don't intercept D. And uh, as a consequence, the all stabilizers are a billion. So now you are, have a standard form and uh, here this, formula give you this uh, class in the uh, equivalent first ID. So where the sum is over conscious classes of stabilizer H of maximum strata F with the stabilizers and with induced action of subgroup Y. And also, uh, so this is a G equivalent rational class. And also we can forget about the function field here and try to project this class to the combinatorial Bursai group. And this is also a G covariant rational classes. So here now we have uh, actually two strategies to compare two classes. So the first one is we uh, give an action on GX, a G on X, we compute this class, it projects to the combinatorial Bursai group. And this is combinatorial Bursai group has finite generators up to some you know, relations. It's computable and we project our class there and we compute uh, their difference. If difference zero, then okay. The difference, if the difference is non zero, then they're not rational. That's one method. The other method is okay, if we compute a class, if there are some incompressible symbol arise, good. But uh, the thing about if the incompressible symbol does not appear in the second class, you know, since it's compressible, it won't appear if you use block relations, so it will never appear. So the difference is never zero. And that's another way to tell uh, two actions apart. That's our two strategies there. But, uh, okay, so now let's go back. So do you remember here it is? Say if you have a D5, A5 or S5 action on some uh, three quadric, a quadric three fold, and the, now, now you compute the classes and then you project to the combinatorial Bursa group and they won't tell, okay, if this action in the risable or not, then you will see since the BC3, they're all zero. So it's impossible to tell, use the first method. So the only the second method is our hope. Okay, let's see here. And then uh, Christian Chinko showed that uh, G covariant version of the continued processing, compactification of subspaces arrangements, and uh, they provide a standard model for the G action on um, this uh, projector space, and they provide the algorithm to compute this cost. So we implement this algorithm in MAGMA and apply this machinery to compute the projectively linear or linear actions on PN uh, with. Uh, G in the PGL n plus one with n at mode three, and also apply this machinery to smooth quadric hypersurface in PN with n at mode four. So among our, our results are uh, in dimension two, the Bursa formalism does not allow to distinguish primitive actions, but yields many new examples of non-rational linear and projective linear actions. Uh, in dimension three, we exhibit new types of non rational linear actions on P3, as well as non linearizable actions on smooth support groups. So, this uh, for dimension one, this is a trivial, but uh, for completeness, I want to show you. 
So in dimension one, PGL2, the finite subgroup of PGL2, well, they are either cyclic, dihedral, A4, S4, A5. And uh, the classification of rational action on P1 is simple, we just tell the controversy within EGL2C. And uh, here our proposition is uh, the rational type of action of finite group of G on P1 is uniquely determined by the class. So if the class are different, so the action is not good. they are different. So in dimension two, uh, here's a classification of uh, subgroups of PGL3. They're primitive, uh, transitive, but in, in primitive and intransitive. So on primitive actions, we have uh, the Bursa formalism does not distinguish primitive actions. They're all bur their Bursa symbols are all the same. So we're not, we can't distinguish them. On transitive but intrimitive actions, the Bursa group formalism allows to distinguish transitive intrimitive actions, which is indistinguishable and Rochester's in using invariance. And here's an example. So consider a G acting on P2, which is given by this thing. So where zeta n is the answer of unity. And here we set n to eight. The two actions are given by uh, of this form where S equal to one, T equal to seven, and S prime equal to three, T equals to T prime equal to five. So now uh, when you try to mod eight, you have uh, one times seven equals to three times five. So here that's the uh, Richardson using variance is inconclusive in this case. But uh, here's our birth side uh, symbols here. So that's it, that's how it looks. And uh, the difference here, we projects to the conductorial birth side group. And I find out the uh, difference is non-zero those two actions are not G covariant for rational. And uh, this is all done by computer. Okay, so it looks like complicated. They are handled by computer. So this is all over the complex number? Oh yes, it's all over the C, all over C. Okay. And on intransitive groups, the G has the form of this. Uh, it's uh, some uh, cyclic groups times G prime. So here, uh, and where G prime is a sub of GL2, it's a lift of uh, some group in GGL2. So here, if uh, G prime or G bar prime is cyclic, then G prime is also cyclic, and uh, G is a rank two abelian group. And in this case, uh, Rochester using variance determines equivalent rationality of such questions. Okay. And uh, when G prime, a uh, G bar prime is dihedral with you know, some with n not equal to one, two, three, four, six, eight, twelve, or a uh, G bar prime is eight, five, and with n greater or equal to two, the group that means non rational linear actions on um, P2, because uh, some of them they have a different person symbol. So now we go to dimension three. So here's a classification of uh, finite subgroups of PGL4. So they're either you know, intransitive, transitive, but prim primitive and primitive. So on primitive actions, there are 30 controversy classes of finite subgroups given by Blanchfield. And uh, these actions can be analyzed by rational rigidity or super rigidity techniques. And the action is rational, rationally rigid if and only if it is not <coughs> equal to A5 or S5. Right. And uh, so here we compute some, some uh, there are some computation examples. For example, when G is S6, there are two actions of these, <coughs> and their birth side classes differ in the conductorial birth side group. Thus, these two actions are not rational. And for example, you have uh, A7. There are two, also two actions, but they're, these actions are super rigid and thus not rational to each other. But their classes are the same. The first set of classes are the same. So in this case, that the classes uh, is also equal in the uh, equivalent Bursite group. And uh, we also compute the Bursite symbols for the rest, uh, all 30 conjugate classes. So on transitive imprimitive actions, 
So there are two, uh, there are, we have the classification, either the living invariants of the union of those two still lines or they have an orbit of lens four. Uh, the second type was analyzed by Chamsov and Sarikian that uh, every intrinsic monomial subgroup, which with the exception of the three groups is just solid. Okay, so they analyze the second class and the way give example of the first class that uh, here G is the D5 times D4, two dihedral groups, product of two dihedral groups, where uh, phi n for primitive act, uh, characters of Cn and let <coughs> V phi be a faithful two dimensional representation of the n determined by phi n. So we have two actions here. And whereas with the explicit representation of these two actions given by here, where zeta m is the m's root of unity. So still with magma, uh, we find that there are difference in the conjectural Versailles group is not zero. Thus we conclude these two groups are not rational, but these two actions are not different rational to each other. <laughs> So on um, interesting actions, G has the form, same, same, same form. And uh, it's shown that uh, when G bar prime is S4, A5, PSL27, A6, and phi N greater equal to three, uh, G admits some rational actions. So similarly to the dimension two cases, we have uh, when G bar prime is PGL27 or A6, there exists number rational interested G actions on P3 for N greater equal to 2. So then we go to apply this machinery to portraits. And uh, so given a G, uh, a group action G on quadric, if there's a G fixed point, the projection from that point give you trivial linear, linearizability of the action. So we assume the G variant locus of X is empty. And uh, to find uh, a linearizable action, of course, we, from the, we know uh, the H invariant locus is now empty for a billion subgroups of G. So that's our two assumptions. So dimension one is kind of trivial, but uh, we still list here. So for dimension one, there's only one group S3 satisfies our two assumptions. And uh, in this case, this uh, group action S3 is linearizable, so easy. So for dimension two, uh, the action group, uh, the biggest action group is this one. And there are only two, action, uh, two groups, S3 and D6 satisfying our assumption. And the S3 has natural actions on the first three coordinates. And the group D6 has an evolution that it changed the sign of X4. So here, the first, uh, the fixed point three F3 action is a linearizable. It is rational to an action on P, I think P, uh, P2, where V2 is a standard two dimensional representation of F3. And the D6 action, is not linearizable, but stably linearizable. Now, here's the main point that, uh, sorry, I'm not that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but I will end it short. So this is uh, dimension three, like uh, we consider a finite subgroup of a well for D5. There are 33 well uh, conjugate classes, but uh, we consider conjugated in the PGL5, so here's a list. And we focus on these two groups. So we focus on this one, SC2 squared times F3. So the group C2 squared times F3 acting on this quadric there. And we compute the symbol. They give you a symbol of this form where H is C5 that uh, changes sign of X5. And here S3 acts on the first three coordinates. C4 change the sign of X4. And the, this is the, gives you a compressible symbols. So here S bar is a compressible symbols that uh, appear in this class. And uh, the Y bar action on Q is not rational to a linear actions. 
uh, all the product such actions. And most importantly, we compute uh, all S is C2 squared times S3 actions on P3. And we find out that uh, this S bar action, uh, this S bar symbol, which is an inversible symbol, does not arise. So we conclude that uh, the use our strategy two, that uh, this group G, C2 squared times F3 is, in, uh, is not linearizable. And thus, this uh, group C2, uh, C, uh, S3 times D4 containing C2 squared times F3, this group is not uh, linearizable and not uh, projectively linearizable. Yeah. So that's the end of the talk. Thank you.